Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. Today we're taking a look at a keyboard that's been on the market for a while, but I haven't had a chance to take a look at it. Now, I have reviewed other keyboards from this particular designer who has a couple of different shops online, Boy You. Um, you guys may have remembered me taking a look at the Soda 68. Um, it's a nice 65% kit that I found quite well built, just a little bit overpriced, but it's perfect for folks who want the sound of a modded keyboard without actually doing the work. Because this, basically this keyboard is ready to go out of the box. It sounds like it's modded and it, it is a Road Warrior keyboard as it comes with a wrist rest that's also a cover. The Atom 60, this is a 64 key, 60% uh, keyboard that actually sounds quite nice um, I still have to come back to this and modify it I do need an angle it is flat that's the only thing that I can say about that but it does it is Lego based so um, even though I don't have Lego pieces I probably just gonna use rubber feet but I I'm, I still have a trip to go to a mall for Christmas shopping that has a Lego um, store in there so maybe I'll pick up some pieces and actually just modify with some Lego, but we'll be doing a tape mod to it and a PE foam mod and everything like that. Uh, both of these keyboards I've quite enjoyed, um, especially especially the Atom 60. It's a great kit. It's fun to put together. It almost reminded me of being a kid putting Legos, you know, oh, this is go there, this is go there. And then how well it sounds built. So today we're taking a look at another one of his keyboards from his um, Hex Gear store, which you may remember have the uh, soda caps which I've gotten all three colors of and I really like they not only do they sound good they look good with almost any RGB in almost any case so I've been a, a fan of his product so far so he was like hey why don't you take a look at the the um, the X1 and see what you think so we're today we're taking a look at the X1 Pro 3 mode this one is the Dark Knight edition not the Panda edition the Panda edition was basically this one with um a white body and the the uh, soda keycaps with the white top and I was like oh, I could almost replicate that with a couple other keyboards so let's go with a um, Batman theme so this is our Dark Knight theme sorry uh, so we've got black and gray PBT pudding keycaps and uh, a new quicksand gold box switch so it's a upgraded kale box switch uh, quicksand gold I do believe that it's tactile but I could be wrong so let me go ahead and Take off the shrink wrap and dig into it. So there we can see the layout is a 65% uh, without a blocker and it has indicators up at the top. Specifications, it has uh, Bluetooth 2.4 and um, Type-C wired. The KO box switch up to 100 million life cycles. White backlight, layout of 68 keys. All right, so this is not an RGB, it's just a white backlight, which at least there's a backlight. I mean, I prefer at least give me some white rather than nothing. Let's open this up and see what we've got. Oh, cool carrying case. We're going to set you aside for right now. Just see what we have in the boxes as far as accessories go. We got a quick start guide. Looks like it comes in a couple of different languages, and it seems to be pretty complete. Uh, it's got uh, the instructions on the modes. The shortcut keys, charging and low battery indicators. I like that they're not reusing LEDs, but they have their own indicators. Um, from what I can see in the box at the top right. Here we have, oh, looks like we have some extra keycaps. All right, let's see. Let's just, whoa. Oh, these are... Now these are interesting. They've, they've definitely taken pudding caps to a whole new level because I mean that two-tone, I gotta say I've always been a big fan of two-tone. So here's some highlight keys. We unfortunately broke the bag open. And then we have, looks like a, uh, is it a nylon braided cable? Yep, it's nylon braided. USB-A to USB-C, and we have 
a separate metal. Some people prefer the switch puller. I kind of like the dual ended one or the plastic one that comes with the new CIYs. All right, so that's basically what we've got here. We've got these extra keys, which we may put on. But let's go ahead and open this up. We've got a couple of things in here. Oh, hey, look. This comes with a wrist rest. I was not aware of that. Nice. Got to like it when a keyboard includes a wrist rest. I mean, we don't all need them depending on our current work setup, but I wonder if this is... Yep. As I thought, it's magnetic. Very nice. Um, so we've got this... Uh, kind of like a fishnet, but it's soft. It's like almost cushy um, carrying case. And we've got, which one of the flimsier plastic, but it's a dust cover nonetheless. All right, so let's set all of this aside right now. And take a look at the Hexgear X1 Dark Knight Edition. So, all right. Side for a second. Now we see we have indicator lights there. We've got a bit of a bezel, not quite as thick as, uh, say, the V1, but I, I gotta say, I, I am liking bezel on some of these keyboards. Um, the lines on the side are actually, they're different. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them bad. They have, has a 2.4 gigahertz dongle with a pocket right there, and it has a total of two pairs of feet for three typing angles. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn her on, see what we got. Oh, when it does that circle like that, it means it has a Sonics um, MCU. That means it may actually be able to be ported to uh, Sonics QMK. All right, so first thing I'm noticing is that uh, I know I'm not plugged in, so maybe the battery is low. Let me just go ahead and turn it off and plug it in. All right, yeah, when it does that kind of like a snake pattern. All right, so it's blinking over here. Yeah, just so you guys can see, they did it like this with the Soda 68 as well. It has both a USB-C and a USB-A connector, which is... Um, Nowadays, a lot of laptops, I mean, that's all they have is USB-C ports, so that's gonna make a huge difference for a lot of folk. All right. But the function escape puts it into factory reset. All right. FNT is wired. Function of T. All right, um, so it is working in wired mode, but does that blinking mean that it is charging? All right, in wireless mode, if the charging indicator blinks when the battery's low, please connect the USB cable for charging. When the data cable is connected, the computer will be automatically charged. Charging indicator flashes fully charged after indicator is off. So I guess that's, that's kind of a, uh, huh. So that keeps on going until it's fully charged, um, gathering. All right, all right. So besides that, that's a little bit of a, I mean, it's right next to the caps lock indicator, but it almost lights it up a bit. I don't think the diffuser has much space. Um, I don't know, I mean, that's, that's kind of a, not a deal breaker to me, but I mean, that's gonna be, if I'm working, a blinking light to me means something that needs attention now. Um, that's in IT. I mean, yes, we have hard drives that blink when they're doing activity and network, you know, switches that blink, but you're not usually staring at them. But if you go and look at your server rack or your home lab rack and you see something blinking that is not your hard drive array and it's not your, um, network switch, it's usually going to be something that you have to take a look at. Um, so blinking on the keyboard, for me, it's going to constantly make me go, oh, is something wrong? Is something wrong? So I wish there was a way. Some manufacturers like to 
reuse, you know, like they'll use the space bar key while it's charging and turn it green no matter, regardless what you do with the LEDs. And then once it's charged, you know, return to the color that matches the rest of the pattern. Um, here they actually went the extra step and added an indicator specifically for bar battery charging. But I should have a way to be able to turn it on or off. Just blinking like that, it's kind of like, it's going to distract me. It's going to distract me. Anyway, let's move on. That's a, that's a minor thing, but I know for me personally, that's going to be an issue. Now, I wanted to see if I could get, that's all the brightness I can get. I'm going to lower the lights in here a bit and see, because it doesn't seem to be very bright. It's not very bright at all. I've got lights turned down significantly and I cannot, I cannot make out the markings. Um, on there so that's LED though just white it's not very bright at all is it because of the switch I mean it seems fairly bright when I take it out the switch does have a window oh, these are linear these are not tactile These are new kale switches. It's a very light three pen linear from. And then you can see the PCB in there. Huh, it doesn't go all the way off. That's also odd. That's the lowest it'll go. That's the highest it'll go. All right, well, this is, i got to say, I'm finding some quirks on this one. I can't see the legends because it's it's not bright enough, and I'm in a dimly lit. I mean, it's not really that. I know I got lights pointed at me, but it's still kind of dim in here. So and most of the time I can see uh, the uh, legends when I'm using, you know, um, the shine through keycaps that are standard or OEM on the keyboard. Let's take a look at these stabilizers and see what we got here. We got like a frosted white with uh, yellow stem stabilizers and they are fairly loose. They, they could use a piece of tape. They definitely could use a piece of tape. So I'm definitely going to be coming back to this one to mod it. Because, um, I mean, I, I do like the layout. I like the design and I like the feel of it. Like I said, that that's the other thing. The Soto has the same issue. That magnet is just not strong enough. And one little bump and this puppy's coming. So... That's not very... Um, very well placed in there because that magnet really hardly holds it it should have a some sort of locking mechanism in there as well also that being so recessed it's going to prevent some cables from getting in there that USB-C port let's go ahead and turn it on to Bluetooth mode and check it out with the um, now the wrist rest is uh, hollow but thankfully we're not topping typing on that but I'm afraid that it might add. Hmm. Keyboard doesn't sound as hollow as I was expecting it to be. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually some dampening going on in there already because it actually does not sound all that hollow. Let me just take a look down here. Yeah, we can definitely see that there is some case foam. Oh, and we also have plate PCB foam. So yeah, this is definitely going to be worthwhile taking the effort to mod um, because it's it's solidly built. I mean, it it's not lightweight by any means. It's you know solid. It feels substantial enough for what it is. Okay, that's just telling me that it's in 
2.4 dongle mode and it has a Bluetooth indicator, caps lock indicator, oh no, battery indicator and then caps lock indicator. So for a 65%, now I believe this one, before I start spouting numbers. All right, so it retails MSRP for $89.99, but right now it's still on sale for the rest of the week, it looks like for 25% off. So it comes down to $67.49 for their Black Friday sale, which honestly, for what you're getting, I think it's a pretty good product. I mean, like I said, it has um, already padding in the two different spots. That light, that's, I mean, like I said, that's, if it's really that much of an issue, I could put some tape over it. But since I'm going to be wired all the time, as soon as it's charged, it should go away. Uh, other than that, I mean, the brightness of the LEDs, we can't do much about, but we can change out the caps after we mod it. So right now, I mean, at, especially at the sale price that they have it right now, I've got to say, I have found that his keyboards, boy, you, um, he's a designer. Uh, he does put a lot of thought and effort into how the keyboard sounds. And so far, the keyboards that I've gotten from him stock, I mean, sound decent. Yes, they could sound better, but they sound much better than a majority of stock keyboards. Uh, barring probably Keychron, um, the keyboards I've reviewed from him are uh, are just well built. Oh, and just disclaimer: I guess I didn't do it at the beginning. Uh, I did. I, I paid uh, very little for this keyboard. He gave me a significant discount, um, and he didn't actually ask for a review in exchange. It was more like let me know what you think of it. So, but I thought I'd do a review anyway. Um, I think he appreciates me being honest and giving feedback. Uh, so, like I said, I think they're well built. I think they're well designed. Uh, nothing is perfect. Um, but like the Soda 68, I went to go mod it. And there was really nothing to mod because it was pretty much just out of the box. Good to go. It sounds really good. Um, like I said, the only complaint to think that I... The, the one thing I would say, hey, bro, you please work on is put a bigger magnet for your 2.4 dongles. I mean, look, I just flipped it over and it was already, you know, on the ground. Uh, I found my Soda 68 one on the floor the other day, got kicked under a desk. I don't even know when it fell out, but my Soda 68 is, I mean, I primarily keep it in my um, laptop back now because it is my ro Road Warrior kit. I haven't done anything to it. So this one, like I said, I, I had the choice between this one or the TKL, but since the 65% uh, form factor seems to be a lot more popular at the moment anyway. I mean, I know I I prefer TKLs. Uh, my kids, they prefer 60 and 65%. My wife prefers TKLs. So it's like, I don't know. Is it because we're older we don't mind a bigger keyboard? I don't know. I mean, I can work off of 65%, but I need a numpad. And I need a numpad with a, a knob. I prefer to have a knob. And especially one that I can do, you know, several different layers on so I can hit function you know and do something else whether it's zoom up and down a timeline if I'm editing a video um, there, there's many different functions that you could put to it I mean even scroll up and down the web page which I don't use because I always have a wheel on my mice that's, uh, to me that's one of the greatest inventions I mean I would still deal with the um, the balls as much of a pain in the butt as the balls were as long as you know, we always got this. Obviously, I, I do like the laser and the remote. I don't, I can't use high DPI mice, though. The gaming mice, it's, it, I just, I guess I'm just too used to doing broader strokes, but it's like, it's like so exact. It's like, I, I always miss the button. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm an, getting to be an old man. I am a grandfather, but let's not use that against me, okay? <laughs> anyway. Um, the design of this keyboard, the look of this keyboard is really nice. Uh, the LEDs leave something to be desired. Uh, although, like I said, I'm probably going to switch out the caps. But I do like this um, black on gray almost um, keycap look. And I wonder how it will look on, on another uh, keyboard. But that's neither here nor there. Today we're just taking a look at the stock uh, keyboard. But I would say that, I mean... Like I said, for me, I'm going to come back to this keyboard and I'm going to mod it. Uh, if it had a top cover that was also a brush press, it might actually beat out the Soda as my Road Warrior. But since the, the Soda 68 has the, 
the cap that not only protects the keycaps from pressing or turning on or activating or whatever, it also flips over and becomes a wrist stress. That's nice for on the go. I mean, you're going to be in situations where you show at somebody's office and you need to you know, change this, do that. You know, oh, I'm going to be here for a couple of hours, set up a spot. Don't have to worry whether they have a keyboard drawer or their keyboard's like crusted because it hasn't been cleaned in a decade. Whatever the case, I could just set up my keyboard, my workstation, my laptop, I'm good to go. All right, let's get technical. Today we're taking a look at the X, the Hex Gears X1 Pro. This is a 65% three mode, 68 key a keyboard that is made by Hex Gears and the designer Boyu. It manufacturer retails for $89.99, though it's currently on sale uh, through the rest of the week for $67.49. Yeah, this one is the Dark Knight option. There is also a Panda option, which is a white case with white keycaps on the top and the black pudding style on the, on the side because these are hex gears pudding caps, not your standard pudding caps. It has uh, three switch options when you go to buy it. A sky blue, which I assume is clicky. A rose red, which I assume is a tactile. And a quicksand gold, which I have loaded on here, which is a uh, light to medium tactile switch. They're all from Kale, but it is hot swappable, so you can put in any switches that you like. Now, it does come with white only LED background lighting. And although they seem to be bright, they seem to be dimmed out by the switch choice. So when I do mod it, I'm going to try using perhaps some clear and see if I can get more light out of it than it does now. It does come with a magnetic wrist rest that, though light, it serves its purpose. It has a pulling rate of 1,000 hertz or 1,000 cycles per second. The keycaps are a PBT shine through OEM profile. It does weigh, come in at 704 grams as it comes fully loaded, and it includes a 2300 milliamp hour battery, which is decent, but being that it's white RGB or white LED, or if you turn the LEDs off, you should get a good amount of time or use out of it. Now, standing stock, this keyboard sits with the chin of 22 millimeters and a back of 29 millimeters. That gives us a typing angle at default of five degrees. Now, if we use our middle feet, kick them out, our back is gonna increase to 35 millimeters and our typing angle is gonna increase to nine degrees. Now, using the final set of feet, we're gonna bring the back up to 41 millimeters off the surface with a typing degree angle of 13 degrees. Anyway, uh, we've taken a look at this 65% uh, kit. I think it's a good Road Warrior kit, and it's um, the way that it sounds. I mean, it actually doesn't sound all that bad. For those that are like, well, as long as it sounds okay, I'm good to go. But I will be coming back to this and modding it because I think I can really make this thing sing since it's already well built from the get-go. Like I said, I have a couple of minor complaints that blinking charging light uh, but once it's fully charged i'm hoping that it'll just become solid or go away and uh, the fact that 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 dongle is just too easy to drop out is um are my only minor complaints uh the leds not being bright enough i think that's more the switches in this case uh, but i wish that that would have been taken into consideration before they were released you know i, I I feel like something was missed during testing here and you know unless I mean even in a dark room it's really hard to see the lettering I mean it's actually easier to see without the lights coming through because that little bit of light that dims almost makes the um, because they're gray keycaps almost gives it a grayish tint so they almost kind of just blend in to the surface of the keys so um, I might actually just out of curiosity I guess I could do one right now just out of curiosity if I switch one of these caps out because I believe this is what the panda has are the white ones and yeah it's not much much better I can see the light near the top but it still doesn't um, kind of defeats the purpose of shine through though when I come back to mod it I will most likely be putting 
um, a different set of keycaps on it. I may actually stick with the, uh, the gray and black theme, but I think I'll probably go another route. I can think of a couple of keycap sets that would look nice on here. And uh, thankfully the only uh, non-standard is the, the 1.5 shift over here. One, yes, that's 1.5 or 1.75. Um, and then the 1U uh, modifier keys on the right of the space bar. So most keycap set should work with this. Anyway, uh, thanks to Boyu for uh, get, sending this out to me with a significant discount. I do enjoy uh, what he's coming up with. Adam series has many new kits to come. Um, I'm excited about that. A lot of people that have gotten the Adam have, I mean, there's been primarily positive praise about it, and I think it, it deserves it. It's a very interesting design. In my opinion, it's a better pick than the Mel Geek. Uh, Lego keyboard because that thing looks like something for a toddler. Now that's my opinion. This keyboard, I think it's a decent buy, especially right now on Black Friday sale, but it's going to require, you know, in my opinion, it's going to require some modifications um, just to make it right for me. For some people, this may just do it. Who knows? What I'm going to do now is go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test. Uh, I haven't done anything. I haven't even given any grease there was already a little bit of grease on the modifiers and they actually I mean they don't sound that bad minus a little bit scratchy I don't really hear too much ticking but I will be coming back to this keyboard I will be fully modding it blah, blah, blah. I will be fully modding it and getting it to sing I want to I want to get the best sound out of this keyboard that I can so I'll leave you guys with the stock sound test of the hex gears x1 pro 65% Please let me know in the comment section below what you think of this keyboard. Um, and if there's any other comments you guys got, please shoot them to me. If there's anything you want me to do when I come back to modify this keyboard, shoot them below. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.